how's it going everybody? Tactical Homestead here. And I am on some old country road and it is not taking me home. So I apologize for the uh, video and probably audio too. But we are uh, just living the dream. So yeah, I went on like a 10 minute rant in another video and I decided not to post it because it just sounded whiny and angry and I just, I'm not, I'm good, I'm good. But I do want to talk about a lot of the topics and I'm trying to do it with a uh, certain level of professionalism, dare I say. Yeah, I know, I'm professional, it's weird to think. I don't think I am. Either way, alrighty. So, a lot of people are getting into homesteading that haven't before, and they just don't know what things to do, and they don't know any of the specifics, and that's tough. That is a tough place to start from. And also, the why, right? Because we're, lo we're looking at this, this economy that we're in currently, the, uh, I see my beard's all knotted up. Uh, we see this economy that uh, we're, we're living in right now, at least in, in most of the world. Uh, speaking, America specifically is kind of looking at it pretty bad. And people are going, well, I don't have a whole lot of faith in a lot of things that I had before. I lost it. And they're worried that the whole house of cards is going to come crashing down to one form or another. Or what have you. Maybe they're prepping out of desperation or homesteading out of desperation because they're impoverished because they lost their job for whatever reason. Okay. Right. Enter your scenario here. The fact still is, is they're looking for the, the things. What are the things you gotta do? Specifically, details, man. They will get you killed. They'll save your life, too. So... I think if you look at it in order of operation based upon the foundations and the principles of preparedness specifically regarded to survival, you need hope, you need air, you need adequate shelter, you need water, you need food, and then overlapping all of those in an umbrella, you need security, and you need medical care in the event of an injury or illness. So, if you break those down, you look at them as a line item. You gotta get right in here, right? That's a big deal. You have to have a why for everything. Uh, most of us are above water and not in space, so air is not necessarily a big deal, but we can talk about that in regards to natural disasters at detail some other time, but I'm not talking about that. Water. Water is important, depending on where you're located. Um, generally speaking, most people can survive an average of three days without water, and you use an average in a incredibly conservative scenario, five gallons of water per person per day. The average household uses 147 gallons of water per day, and that is a family of four. That's the dishes, that's the laundry, that's the dishwasher, that's the dog water, uh, that is everything, cooking, cleaning, etc. Mopping the floor, 147 gallons a day. It's astronomical, I know, to think of, but when you start breaking it down, it's not that much when you consider everything you're doing. So you need a way to facilitate water have a well, have rain catchment. Of course, that's putting the cart way before the horse. This is assuming you don't live in an apartment in central Los Angeles, where not only is it illegal to catch rainwater, but it ain't raining. Well, not until recently. <laughs> well, they got what they uh, were hoping for, didn't they? Uh, yeah, so you need you need water. You need water to survive, and that'll get you, get you water. Shelter, shelter's a big deal. And not only from weather, harsh climates, but protection itself from the outside world. You need to be able to have a refuge of sorts that provides a certain level of peace, tranquility, and insulation. And I think 
think that's honestly a big reason why a lot of people, I'm crossing a lot of bridges and I'm a little wide, so I gotta be careful. These are one lane bridges and they have no guardrail whatsoever. Just concrete into water. But yeah, you need to you need an adequate shelter. And if we're looking at a survival scenario, yeah, you can go fly a tarp out in the woods and call it a day, sure. Yeah, that's fine, build a fire, da 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 da. But you need to have a place that you can store resources, rest, and formulate plans for the next operation. A refuge, cook food, take showers, all that stuff. So most of the people that I think watch me on whatever platform you're viewing me on, have at least some form of shelter and they have air I would hope and they have some level of access to water and food so a lot of that stuff is kind of predisposed at the point however continuation continuity of function that's a big deal that's the thing that a lot of people get hung up on that most people that I see on YouTube glaze right on over use it in overly generalized terms, do not get into specifics and just kind of, eh, I'm going to assume you already know it, so I'm not going to hash it over again for the umpteenth time because blah, 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 even though I never really talked about it in the first place. Regardless, assuming you are not in a ninth story apartment building in a center of a city, and you're focusing on moving further into a less populated area, and you're currently... Oh, dude, that gate got messed up. A less populated area. What What is the first stage of peace of mind, really, and a countermeasure against desperation when it comes to homesteading preparing? And we're assuming collapse of government, uh, collapse of economy, pick, pick your flavor, man, don't really care, um, as far as things coming back, pick your timeline, doesn't really matter, the point is, is you need to be prepared to some level, so that in three days, you are not just up shit creek, drinking out of the toilet, and hoping that that off-brand life straw you bought works, yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that. So, let's start with shelter. You need adequate shelter, right? What does that mean? It means you need to learn how buildings are put together. That's what. That's a thing you need to do. You need to understand basic framing and carpentry. That's what you need to do. That's a thing you need to do. Understand what the R value of insulation is. Understand stud spacing understand the construction of buildings that will help you immensely that's a thing you need to do a lot of people I think watch my channel on various platforms have at least a basic understanding of carpentry if you don't look it up do some research so that's a thing before we even get into building buildings choosing buildings locations any of that understand why buildings in general, houses, etc., are put together the way they are. How do they work? Start there. Then, we're looking at water. Now this is one of those things that, yes, it is highly geographically dependent. Facilitation of water. If you're in an arid climate, then it doesn't rain as often as it does in other areas that have more rainfall. Wow, surprise, shocker. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't do rain catchment, provided the fact that it is legal, unless you're doing some sort of weird improvised thing that's rapidly deployable. When you do rain catchment, you need to understand that unless it's caught immediately, you need a way to purify it, unless there's like a sea burn incident or whatever. Or now it's a uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and there's another one now that they added to that acronym. Seaburn E? I think it's E. Oh, look, a squirrel. Alright, so you need to purify the water. Um, starting there, a thing you need to do before you even start getting into any of that is 
understand how water filtration and purification works. What sort of pure, what sort of filter do you even need? Now, if you're living in suburban America, like the other 70% of the population is, then you're curious about maybe storing some barrels of water, and you're like, man, what is long-term storage? What does that look like? Forget about catching rainwater. I just want to be able to have more than three days worth of bottled water in the cabinets in the garage underneath the all the snow gear that I bought last year. Okay. Find yourself some food grade drums. Uh, the internet is cool. There's a lot of places you can research, but that's highly expensive, right? We're looking at uh, cost efficiency. Look at uh, used websites like, um, I kind of went downhill, but like Craigslist. Places like that. I don't have Facebook, but Facebook Marketplace, I heard, is a pretty cool one. Find yourself a 55-gallon drum, or better yet, an IBC tote, intermediate bulk container. They're between 275 and 330 gallons, and you can stack them three high. Find one of those that had, like, sunflower oil or something in it that's used from somebody that can get them from a facility that does something with sunflower oil. They're generally pretty cheap because I have more of them than I know what to do with. If you can't afford one, then focus on smaller containers that are modular in uh, orientation. So, like, 5.3 gallon buckets that have sealed lids, that kind of thing. Just to make sure they're food grade. Make sure they have proper gaskets that seal well. They're not damaged in any way. Uh, and then you're fine. Don't worry about, you know, BPAs and microplastics and all that other nonsense. Although it is a factor that does contribute. Um, focus right now on food grade containers that can store water long term without any sort of integral issues. And then fill them up with water. Oh, that's a thing you need to do. If you want to have longer than three days worth of water in your house, have three days more worth of water in your house. More than three days worth of water in your house. That's what you need to do. Now, if you're looking at producing your own resources, which is the postgraduate level of preparedness, you've advanced beyond stockpiling and now you're a net producer of the things you use. Yeah, we can focus on rainwater catchment and putting in wells and water retention ponds and all that other fun stuff, but we're talking brass tacks, basic ground up, fundamental, the actual specific things you need to do right now. From somebody who is operating at a net zero beginning, the very beginning, long ago and far away. Uh, yeah, so store some water. You can find uh, the water tanks at Home Depot if you're somebody who's affluent. Uh, you could buy those uh, food grade thousand gallon water tanks, or they come in like up to 3,000 gallons if you're super paranoid. They're food grade, they require basic plumbing fittings, and you can tie them into your house in all kinds of ways. And yes, you can do rain catch, but yes, you can seal them up so you can store water long term. And yes, you can put bleach in them, and it won't degrade the container. However, depending on where you are, uh, protecting them from the sun is kind of a big deal. And there you go. Now you have a whole bunch of emergency water that, in the event of some sort of bad thing happening, yes, you have something to drink, you have something to wash your butt with, wash the dishes, cook food, make sure the dog doesn't die of dehydration, um, all that stuff. Wash clothes. Clothes are important. Unless you want to run around naked. Because after a little while, your pants and your socks can stand up on their own, and people can smell you way before they can see you. But yeah, mm -hmm. water's cool. Food. Yeah, you can stockpile food. A thing you can do is buy one of those uh, three-month supply of freeze-dried whatevers, and that buys you a little bit of time, quite literally. And if you're looking at the advanced portion of that, yeah, start looking at growing your own food. But before you even go to Home Depot and buy seeds, figure out what growing zone you're in. It's, it's information that is easily available on the internet, and it tells you a whole lot about where you're at before you even stick a seed in the ground, much less the type. From there, you can determine what grows best in your area and do a little bit of research on soil composition and gardening. 
And that is a whole deep, gigantic well of knowledge that I assume a lot of people have at least a basic understanding of, but you can never actually be the, you know, aficionado, the master, because it's a constant lifelong learning experience. And ultimately, you Suburban Joe, or Jane, in it, the middle of wherever, uh, the dirt in your backyard is generally not the best, but it's not terrible either unless you live like, you know, in Tucson or something. But, another bridge. But yeah, figure out what the dirt's like in your backyard. What is it? Is it clay? Is it sand? Figure that stuff out. That's a thing you can do. So stock, store up some food. Canned goods are nice. But there's also, oh yeah, here we go. We're climbing a hill. Am I still in four-wheel drive? I am not. Come on, baby. There we go. Um, put together three months' worth of food. Figure out your caloric requirement for your family, pets included. And start putting that stuff away. And those food-grade buckets that I was telling you about earlier, those are going to come in super handy. Uh, yes, you can spend thousands of dollars on vac chamber vacuums and everything else and do it super like fancy and sophisticated, but right now you're just looking at buying yourself a little bit of time so that you're not just immediately screwed if just the slightest thing goes wrong in the economy. So put some stuff away. Start, start with three months. Hell, if you're super poor like most people are, including myself, then just buy some things that are on sale, put together like a little ghetto MRE kind of thing that's not really ready to eat. It's just like a meal that requires minimal preparation that's cheap. You know, rice, beans that are dried, and those, uh, what the hell are they called? Those little pasta packets, you know what I'm talking about? I ate one in a video a while back. Uh, those are like still around a dollar. Put together 18, 2,000 calories of just a handful of those and then vary it a little bit with some starches and other things. I mean, that's another research project you can go do is understand nutritional requirements for a person. What kind of proteins and starches do you actually need? Because a man cannot survive on Cheetos alone. So maybe figure out what, what it is you need to store before you even store it. But there's a lot of stuff that's canned, like uh, canned beans, uh, corn, etc. That's just an easy little put away to buy yourself a couple days or a couple weeks. And then start there. And then when you do get that, that gardening curiosity of, I want to be a net producer, learn a little bit about the dirt in your backyard. And then maybe buy a tomato start or something. Something easy to grow. Toe in the water. You don't have to just jump in way above your head, get overwhelmed by it, and then go, this is too hard, and throw your hands up and give up. That doesn't help anybody. You just wasted your money, your time, and basically made yourself a liability the whole time you're doing it because you have no idea what you're doing whatsoever with a bunch of new stuff. And that's a problem. And you see that everywhere. Not good. Not, not good at all. And any, any sitting or situation, people with new things scare me uh, because they either don't know what they're doing or they have more money than sense, literally. Uh, very rarely do I see somebody who has a bunch of new equipment that is absolutely just on point. So, I, I digress. But yeah, buy yourself some plants that are super easy to grow. They require not a whole lot of um, deliberate attention. And then if you're really like, whoa, man, you're getting like heavy duty into homesteading, buy yourself a chick, a little baby chicken. And maybe some stuff that goes with the baby chicken to keep it alive. Now, wow, you've crossed over. Um, I will caveat though, I know of at least three houses of people that I know personally uh, that their house has burned down because of a heat lamp. So be uber careful if you do buy a chick and you buy a heat lamp for the chick because surprise, they need to be kept warm. Little little homework for y'all if you do get into that. Uh, learn how to keep a chicken. And in fact, buy three of them because one's probably gonna be a rooster and the other one's probably gonna die. 
So there's a little lesson for the kids there. Um, yeah, learn learn about what they require. And then if you uh, end up with a hen in a year, you can have an egg. And you can do whatever you want with that egg. And surprise, that is basically the very first inception of what it is to homestead. The, the very beginnings. So yeah, those are some things you can do. And if you're operating at a much higher level than that, great, good for you, you're above the curve. Uh, but a lot of people, they just don't know. And that's okay. Because I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm an expert and talk down to people and speak in broad vaguities and assume that somehow everybody's just up to speed and, and throw up a bunch of you know acronyms or something that I learned once upon a time and then move on. Because the whole point, one of the whole points that I even started doing all this is to bring people up, to lift people up, not talk.